Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Blue Jays today. We're your boys. We always got something to say about the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm your host, Adam Peddle. And I'm your host, Nicholas Playlog. And today, folks, we are going to be talking about some of the recent trade rumors surrounding the Toronto Blue Jays. They just went out. They just brought in IKF. That infield, it is looking pretty full. There is a lot of guys there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> showcase your feelings, Adam. We're going to get to that <laughs> a little bit later as well. But there's a lot of dudes who are rocking in that infield, and potentially one of them has got to go. Before we get into it, folks, please make sure to like, subscribe, and let us know your thoughts down below. Now, I had the opportunity to speak on this IKF signing. We did a whole live stream. It was great. I gave my two cents. Uh, but how about you go and you tell the folks how you really feel? All right, all right. Let me tell you how I okay how I really feel is coming up in just a moment. Okay. From a management standpoint, it goes, this makes sense if we're going to trade some guys, which is why we're creating this video. This only makes sense if we're about to trade some of the current players on our team. Mm -hmm. From a fan standpoint, this makes no effing sense because you have players that are currently on your team that are better than IKF, that are cheaper than IKF. It makes zero sense at all. You could argue, oh, there's all these these, these deep metrics mm. really tell the story about IKF being a quality player. Yankee fans are out there saying, hey, guys, you know what? IKF isn't as bad as you think. He's, he's quality. It's easy to say that when you didn't make playoffs last year. Okay? I'm not trying to make I'm, – I'm trying to make playoffs this year. Mm -hmm. IKF, yes, he's a bench guy. He's not going to start every day for us. So if he's a bench guy and we go out and make other moves to put him on the bench, it's it's okay. Mm -hmm. But if he's going to play every day, it's horrible moves. So that's, my, that's what I thought. Well, let's remind everybody about some of those deeper metrics, everybody. We went over this during the live stream that we had. But last year, Isaiah Kiner Falefa, the dude put up a .1 war. And keep mm -hmm. in mind, that is with him being phenomenal defensively. So that just goes to show how rough it was in the middle of the mm -hmm. lineup. And when you flash over to some of these deeper numbers, yeah. right, the expected batting average, you know, even though it is better than some of those expect uh, other expected numbers still relatively low the slugging very low Ooh. the guy does not hit for a lot of power now to his credit he also uh doesn't whiff a whole lot either oh doesn't, doesn't whiff a whole lot in, that's in, great in, in the in the better percentiles of striking out as well doesn't chase a whole lot but it's not like he's out here producing runs and that is something that uh that we've talked about a lot that a lot of blue jays analysts have talked about is that this team they do need somebody who's going to produce runs. That was the biggest problem for us last year. I mean, hell, we won the goddamn team gold glove. So defense is not the issue. It is getting somebody in that can actually hit some home runs, that can drive people in when there's runners in scoring position. And, and IKF, he's not going to be that guy. And I think that is why, along with all of yeah. the other players that we have playing this position, you're starting to hear some of those rumors come out about how the Blue Jays, they could be involved in in a trade with one of those guys leaving the team. Yeah, you had a, a big shout out to Eric Truden right here, uh, who also came out with this tweet talking about the idea that now we have to move some guys mm -hmm. because you're looking at a at a team with IKF, with uh, Espinal, with Biggio, yeah. and uh, David Schneider, you know, yeah. kind of crowding over the second, third base and that, area. And that doesn't even factor in Barger and yes. Horwitz yes. and Martinez, right? Like there are prospects right. in here who could potentially be in the mix for, for jobs yeah. there too. Hor Horwitz would be, you know, primarily first base. So he's kind of on the outside. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those other two, like Oralvis Martinez and Barger, they're they're in the mix in terms of the roster depth. Uh, Flash you over here and quickly, just a big shout out to Battlegrounds guys. This holiday season, man, if you haven't done it already, go check out Battlegrounds guys. Throw some axes. It's all safe. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. It's fun. They got coaches there. So check it out, guys. Visit their website for more details. Eric Truden. He says, have to think there's a trade coming in with the latest hashtag Blue Jays signing up Isaiah, Isaiah kiner Falefa, Shiner Lopez, Bicio, also Lopez, we didn't even bring it up there, yeah, yeah. depth in the system, guy that's been trying to crack into the league for a while in that kind of left side of the infield kind of situation, mm -hmm. uh, and Espinal all stand out as possibilities. But I'm leaning Espinal, and I think we're going to give our opinions on where we're leaning. You know, we're going to take a little bit of a deeper look. Mm -hmm. uh, but what are your thoughts just on that? Because I know I said up top, we have to make a trade. Yeah. Are you kind of on the same boat in that? In that yeah, sense? no, I'm 100% in the same boat, everybody. I mean, there's just too many players who do deserve playing time with not enough positions to play in. Now, I am not going to fool myself or fool any of you guys into thinking that – 
Lopez or or Horwitz or Schneider, any of these guys are going to be all-stars by any stretch of the imagination, right? Like when, when we say that they deserve playing time, they deserve an opportunity, doesn't mean that they're going to develop and be incredible players, right? So when we're talking about trades, we do need to manage some of our expectations. You cannot flip a David Schneider for a Jose Ramirez, even though we will discuss him <laughs> a little bit later. But I do think that when you were looking at this team as a whole, yeah, there is enough players here that you want to get value for and you don't want to have as much as you want depth you don't want to have Lopez and Barger and and Martinez and Schneider and all of these players chilling on the bench and that is something that you're going to have now with IKF signing not a one-year deal but a two-year deal yeah and I think for me that is the most important thing and in what is indicative of the Toronto Blue Jays saying okay, we are going to play this guy and we are at least going to be committed to him enough that he's going to be part of our plans for two years moving forward. Yeah, and, and that's, and again, I hate, I don't want to dwell on this too much about the decision making of getting out of CAF, but that's where it, make, that's where it makes it a really confusing decision. Like, yeah. Okay, you're bringing in this outside guy that is, and granted, just look at his one in scoring position, batting average is 288, but take that what you will. Mm -hmm. doesn't drive in home runs though. Uh, but like, yeah, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, Looking at the team, if that's the plan moving forward, IKF is going to be off the bench, middle infielder, get the guys off their feet for a day. Uh, you got to make some sort of trade, okay? So who's it going to be? You obviously got holes at third base. You got holes at second base mm -hmm. still. So let's start off. Let's go one by one, shall we? Yeah, sure. Let's start off with Kevin Bishop, who I think both you and I agree, probably up there for a starting role in 2020. Uh, four. Yeah, I mean, Kevin Biggio is coming off of his best year in a while. And I mean, when I say best year in a while, it wasn't like great in any stretch of the imagination. But we've been dealing with some rough years mm -hmm. from Kevin Biggio in 2021 and 2022. And in that last month or so, in that last little stretch, Biggio started to turn it on. So mm -hmm. he was getting better. And I mean, the Toronto Blue Jays, they have made it abundantly clear that they like this guy, that they want him to be part of their future, that they want him to be part of their core. So I think that Biggio, so although he might be one of those players that you can get a better return for, it feels like you probably want to keep him at that second base spot, which will be his primary position. He is going to lock that down, most likely with Davis Schneider, maybe with Isaiah Connor falefa cycling in there every once in a while. But I do think that Biggio is, is going yeah. to be in the mix for a starting job next year. For me, it's two things. One, we got to also remember, this isn't even on paper. Biggio is part of this core. Yeah. You know, he's part of the guys. Yeah. He has a presence. You know what I mean? You don't want to trade that away from your team, even though you did trade away Lourdes and Teo. But whatever. We're not going to get into that. But you don't want to trade away another piece of your core, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, another thing, not only play second base, but he can also play third base. Sure. He can play first base, which we currently do not have mm -hmm. a backup first baseman. Uh, he can also play some left. He can also play some right. You know what I mean? And, and we're looking right now as a team. We don't have another fourth outfielder. So, yeah. like, he gives you so many options, and he's a lefty. Yes. So, like, for me, again, yeah, the value. What are you going to get? Another Biggio? It doesn't make any sense, right? So for me, Biggio stays with the Toronto Blue Jays. You don't really go out shopping him because you need him. He's an integral piece. He's a, yeah. He is a quality utility player mm -hmm. for the Toronto Blue Jays. And I mean, based on the signing with IKF, clearly they value utility players yeah. because that is literally what he does. Mm -hmm. Looking at Santiago Espinal, Eric Truden's favorite yeah. potential trade right here. This one does make a lot of sense. This mm -hmm. one absolutely makes a lot of sense because at the end of the day... Espinal, although he has shown flashes, he has never consistently <clears throat> been that guy over a long period, right? Mm -hmm. And he had that great year in 2021, yeah. followed it up with an all-star season mm -hmm. in 2022. But it's kind of misleading because the first half was a hell of a lot better than the second half. And he actually finished with an OPS lower than 700. And then last year, granted, lots of limited playing time really wasn't that phenomenal with the baseball bat. Mm -hmm. And when I think that you, when you're looking at the Jays and when you're looking at their prospects and some of their other young guys, the ceiling on Espinal just isn't necessarily as high as maybe it is with a Barger or a Lopez or a Marti or a Schneider, mm -hmm. right? So when, when you're looking at it from that perspective, maybe you want to get him off the team. Yeah, and looking at Santiago Espinal right now and how he fits with the Jays, I think his ceiling is also capped because he doesn't have as much versatility. He's not an outfielder. Yeah. You know, you, you look at the way that John Schneider kind of constructed this team, and I guess a little bit of Charlie Montoyo too. They really value these bench guys who can give you every single position off the bench, mm -hmm. hence IKF, right? So for him, he's kind of capped. 
However, I think another team, you know, any other team that needs a shortstop, a second baseman, hell, even a third baseman, that with a little bit of promise, like, hey, if we get this guy every single day playing time, what can we get from him? I think Espinal is a great experiment and he's super, super cheap, mm -hmm. right? So for the Blue Jays, you might ask, well, why am I, why would I dump this guy? It's to get those other guys opportunities, yes. potentially third base, you know, clear some roster space as well. If we're going to go get some bigger bats, right? You already brought in that cap, so that's another roster space gone. So trade him. I don't know, like, what would you even get back in return? Cash? Like, like really, uh, maybe a minor, you know, middle tier prospect, maybe you, at best. Yeah, like, you have you know to what I mean? manage expectations right? if you're trading away Santiago Espinal, right? Because at the end of the day, folks, even on a bad team, I think that Espinal is probably going to start out as a bench bat. And again, I think he's a good bench player, right? You can cycle him into some of those spots in the infield and he can deliver every now and again. But I think of the Blue Jays, you want to give that bench uh, opportunity to one of the young players with a higher ceiling, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're trading away a bench player, you can't expect it to be the key piece in a Isaac Paredes trade mm -hmm. or a Jose Ramirez trade or for a, a very talented bullpen pitcher. You are probably looking at cash you are probably looking at uh you know some type of maybe dark throw yeah prospects. like dark throw relief pitcher that you might not even see type of thing i wouldn't expect it to be a whole lot if yeah. santiago Gasmol is the direction that they decide to go in yeah now granted uh we right now currently don't really have a third baseman and he is in the mix i mean people could argue biggio isn't you know a third base option even though he did play a little bit last year mm -hmm. i think people are kind of just stained from that 2021 year but yeah granted bishop could bounce back and be a great third baseman. yeah but espinal really felt like the only other guy on the team especially last year that could give you a quality defensive outing at third base do you sure. think that that might play into a bit of a factor and why they should keep him or not it, it might help a little bit but i just i would find it very hard to believe that we start off next season with santiago espinal being the third yeah. base guy yeah he'd be i mean yeah i hear you like we, we, come on you know yeah. we know the problem on this team is driving in runs we want to we want to be consistently good defensively speaking I, I, I just find it hard yeah. to believe that that's the direction that they're going to go in. And, and yeah, I guess as the Blue Jays, you already made your decision on who's going to be that kind of role player. You know, that maybe backup third baseman. It's it's IKF. Looking at IKF. Yeah. Um, Statcast fielding right here. He played two. I believe these are innings. innings. Two hundred and forty innings at third base that was split between a left and center field. So there you go. That's exactly why you brought him in to kind of fill in that role. So I really do. I'm going to agree with Eric. Like it feels like. Uh, Santiago, es uh, Santiago Espinal is kind of the obvious one to trade here. Sure. Yeah. Right? Let's move but, over to yeah. Davis Schneider, everybody, because we know that his name is going to be in the mix for potential guys that could get moved off. Davis Schneider, tale of two different players. Mm -hmm. When he first came up, that, that first three to four weeks of baseball was some of the best that I think any of us have watched mm -hmm. ever. I mean, I'm speaking from my own personal experience. No, I like, agree. That was, <laughs> was incredible, incredible <laughs> baseball, and it felt like whatever you threw him, it really didn't matter. The guy came and fell back to earth in, uh, in, the, in the last month of the season, September, October, definitely not as good, but he showed that he can do it at the major league level for at least 30 days. There is some promise there. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't expect that this is going to be the big key piece in a Jose Ramirez trade, if that's what you're thinking. But I do think that somebody would at least be enticed enough to throw the dart and potentially move an asset to get him. Yeah, I think somebody would because, A, I mean, you look at, again, this whole year, he had a, over 1,000 OPS. Mm -hmm. You know, it granted only about two months of baseball. But you also got here, you got six years that's of what control. It is. Six years of control for a second baseman. And look, they've got him as third base here. He could definitely play third base. He could definitely be in the mix there, which is promising for the Toronto Blue Jays, who don't have a third baseman. And I'll just comment, too, on the slump. I know a lot of people are going to talk about the slump, that 174 batting average. What I like to look at is that on-base percentage. He didn't, he didn't waver from his approach. Yeah. He kept his approach consistent. And, yes, that did produce – you know, a, a little bit below average OPS plus right there, you know, OPS of 727. Mm -hmm. But that's you're going to have those months and granted very small sample size. But I want to see what this guy can do before I ship him off to some team. I want to see what he can do in a full season because, hell, I'm, not, I'm just saying I'm not trying to gas this guy up, but he could be a decent solution in your infield moving forward beyond 2025. Yeah. I'm just saying. Well, I think that we can agree that at least for right now, and this could change. I mean, my opinion obviously changes a lot, as yeah, I'm sure yeah. a lot of you guys as well. But right now, walking into the season, I think that David Schneider's ceiling 
could be higher than a Kevin Bishop. Yeah, you know, yeah. he could we, become that yeah. guy because we did see it for a time. I would argue that his floor could be lower. Mm-hmm. I, I would say that his floor could be a guy that you know is you know belongs in AAA because again, we don't we don't know exactly what he has to offer. But I think that this is a player that unless you are getting the right deal, unless you are really getting something good that you want to have, mm-hmm. I think you hold on to. I think you spin the wheel. I think you hope that it lands on something yeah. good, and then he develops in your system because then you have six years of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cheap control with potentially a, uh, a you know a, a big look, contribution. Look, he's going to be a big contribution again. I don't want to d- dwell on this point too long, but he's going to be a big contribution if he learns to adjust, right? Because I think a lot of you guys are saying like, oh, you know, now is the best time to sell high on, on David Schneider. And I absolutely hear you, guys. A thousand OPS drafted in like the thirtieth round, right? Absolutely makes sense. But again, what are you getting back? You got to ask yourself that. What are you getting back? Maybe he's a key piece of a Jose Ramirez trade. If it even happens, I'm even saying it's happening. Sure. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. You know, then you do it. But if you're not going to get that, like, who cares? This guy's an integral part of your, uh, potentially an integral part of your team moving forward. Yeah. Now, I know there's another guy that was mentioned on Jay's journal. They talked about Ernie Clement. We don't want to dwell on that too long. It's me and my personal opinion. No offense, Ernie Clement. But this guy was just picked up as a minor leaguer. So I really could... Less. Well, no offense. look, I, no I mean, offense. I think that you're kind of in the similar boat as a Santiago Espinal. I wouldn't expect there to be a massive return coming yeah. back in the other direction. Maybe you get an Ernie Clement level player just in a different position yeah. or, you know, kind of like one of those minor league guys that maybe at some point down the line, maybe he can come up to a team. Yeah. Uh, but I do want to touch on the prospects as a whole, right? Okay. The prospects yeah, yeah. as a whole, because you have all of these major league players. Okay. And if we're not trading David Schneider and we want him to get playing time and we're not trading Kevin Bishop, we want him to get playing time time and we know that ikf is going to get playing time right so you know so th- those guys are there they're going to get playing time that doesn't leave a whole lot of options a whole lot of innings to be played for Aurelis martinez for Otto lopez for uh, uh addison barger for all of these guys who want to come up and who want to own some of those positions in the future what are your thoughts on the on the toronto blue jays potentially trading away a some of those prospects instead of some of these already major league ready guys whoa time for your daily betway breather a quick reminder that the best place to bet is on betway must be 19 years of age or older to play in collaboration with iGaming ontario please bet responsibly now back to the content yeah again it all comes down to what are you getting back in return if you're going to trade away addison barge or elvis martinez for a proven commodity like a jose ramirez you know sure again go for it Mm -hmm. you know that's absolutely phenomenal he we have him for a while great move um but if you're not going to get some sort of return i'd rather keep that because right now based on the moves we made this offseason or unless something changes we get back matt chapman uh there's nobody in line to take over third base right there's nobody right and if you look at the guys currently on the roster those are guys that could easily be replaced. It looks like there's about a two-year window right now when you're looking at Kevin Bish over there. Schneider a little bit longer, of course. But again, he could play. Oh, he can move over to second base. There's mm-hmm. lots of flexibility there. But I think there's options for those guys to eventually come and take over the team uh, at third base or maybe a second base. Do I think it's going to happen this year? I think they're going to wait and see. And you know what I mean? Like, again, we talk about Band-Aids on this team. IKF is that little Band-Aid kind of temporary solution because mm-hmm. you don't really want to waste Barge or Martinez on the bench, mm. you know, when they're trying to, you want them to eventually be, take over uh, for a big role. So I think uh, right now we're going to kind of wait, you know what I mean? And, and see what happens over there at third base, second base. If, if, if Schneider and Bejo, they're just not cutting it and there's nobody else, right? We didn't make a match out move. Then maybe you can start to flirt with the idea of bringing them up later in the season. See, okay. So I, I think that you made a lot of good points there. And I think that that shotgun approach of walking into the season with all of these players right now that is starting to make a little bit of sense to me because maybe they do want to have ikf maybe they do want to have some of those other players teach your elvis martinez and and, and then teach them how to or or let them adjust yeah. to the mlb without all of the pressure i will also say though the two-year window that could be an argument that could mm-hmm. be a reason for why maybe you do want to move some of these players right, because right, again right. Guerrero, two years. Bichette, two years. Danny Jansen, only one year. IKF, two years, right? Uh, I mean, Gosman, I think, is a three, three years, more years. But, yeah. I mean, that that, w- that will yeah. eventually... Bassett, two years. Bassett, two Kukuchi, years. Kukuchi, one year. You know, so it, it feels like the Toronto Blue Jays right now, uh, in two years, there could be a turning of the guard, right? There mm-hmm. could be a big thing. So maybe you have the prospects ready for that, or alternatively, 
Maybe now is the time to trade them away for a difference maker to potentially give your team the best opportunity that you possibly can to go out and to win a World Series with Guerrero, with Bichette, while you still have them on this contract. And frankly, to save your job if you are Ross Atkins. Right, but then I then I got to say, like, and I, I've kind of thrown it out before the team podcast, like, who the hell do you even trade for that would be that difference maker? Like, right. I look around the league, everyone throws out again, Jose Ramirez. I'm kind of off that because... Guardians signed him to a great deal, and they don't really have a lot of money to spend. Like, it doesn't make sense for them to even trade the, him away. Feels like he's a guardian for life. That's like, why you're, they, you're off that in terms I'm of, off that. Uh, as you don't think it's going to happen. It's not going to happen. Because, I I mean, I, I think we oh. can both agree. We want oh, it for to sure, happen. For sure. Yeah. I'm off the reality of that happening. I'm, sure. I'm thinking of reality land right now. I look around the league. There's Alex Bregman being tossed around, but he's only got one year left. You know, like, if I'm thinking longevity, there isn't really many options out there. Someone in the comment down below in the chat, if you know somebody down there at third base that could be, you know, make a trade for the Toronto Blue Jays that would help long, long term, mm-hmm. let me know. But it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So for me, it feels like you kind of have to keep them. You know what I mean? So for that next window. It, it really does depend on the player that yeah. you're getting back in return. And I think that it really, uh, I, I mean, we're going to find out the mindset of this management depending on who they trade because if they trade Barger and if they trade Martinez uh, then they're all in that's what Mm -hmm. they're saying for these next two years we've got to win or we're probably on the way out and Guerrero might go and Bichette might go right We've, we've got to win right now if we want to continue being a competitive team if they want to take a more conservative approach then it's going to be a Santiago Espinal or it's going to be a maybe a David Schneider, right? If they want to right. be a little bit more conservative and not mortgage the future to win right now. Yeah. So most likely, where are you leaning in terms of what guy are we trading? Because I'm leaning, I'm, I'm with Eric. I am leaning Espinal because Espinal, you, can't, you can't have all those guys on the team. Well, okay. Espinal is the easy option. He's, he's, the easy easy, yeah. he's the easiest one to say, okay, this isn't going to be a massive shift of any kind. We can, we can give him away. Nobody's really going to be upset about it. There's not going to be major head lines about this so in that regard i think it's the easiest what i think is the best solution i mean i want the team to go in i want them to i want them to win with the current core that they have because i don't know if guerrero and bachette are going to get extended i don't know what's going to happen after that and i don't want us to have the 2017 2018 2019 type of years again where it's like you know we're just trying to rebuild so i think i want them to go out and and to find a deal of some capacity right to make that happen but i i probably will if i had to bet my life on it lean towards eric Trudin yeah. and saying maybe espinal's the guy yeah and that and that trade guys would just be kind of low-key it would be a low-key trade right uh yeah i don't know i'm uh, i gotta be surprised i know there's really adamas being tossed out there he was kind of my like sleeper third base mm-hmm. shortstop kind of pick but if the if the uh, Brewers are looking to compete again, then it's like looking it's looking like they're going to keep him. Right. But again, he's not like a long term solution either. He's a shotgun. Like he's two years. We we win now kind of well, situation. Speaking of potentially low key trades, this did come out prior to the Isaiah Connor Falefa signing, yeah. so we don't actually know if this is still relevant or not. Yeah. But right before Christmas, the uh, Padres and the Toronto Blue Jays apparently have discussed a Jake Cronenworth trade. Cronenworth. He's had some very good years, very mm-hmm. good years. Last year was not one of them, everybody. Last year was actually the worst year for him. He had a 689 OPS. Honestly, the numbers look very similar to Isaiah Kiner. Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. maybe why I'm thinking to myself, okay, maybe they're off of this guy now that they went out and now that they did get IKF. But I do think that this is actually a very realistic target yeah. for the Jason in terms of somebody that would be achievable with the, with the pieces that you're currently being talked about. Right, right. I don't know if it's necessarily going to be the guy that pushes the needle and takes you over the edge, uh, you know, for your runners in scoring position and, you know, for your defensive needs. And also the fact that I don't think that he primarily plays third base no. at all. No, he's a second baseman. I think he's even a shortstop first baseman. So, I mean, you're addressing that first base kind of need, I guess the second base too. Like if he does want to primarily primarily take over the second base role, then mm-hmm. you shift Biggio and Schneider over to third base, which actually is pretty awesome. Like that's what I loved about having Chapman at third and having all these guys with Mayor Philip Biggio and all these other guys, Espinal competing for second because it was it was compact. Right. It was easy, right? Uh, so in that reality, yeah, that makes sense. Um, but I mean, look, you're looking at potentially a guy who could be with the team for a very long time. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, he does have yeah, he does have an eight team no trade list. So that's also an option. Could that be a thing? I don't know. It's an experimental piece. He'd be super cheap. 
Um, I mean, it's worth a shot if you want to think about extending the window. I wasn't actually super familiar that he had eight, uh, seven years left on his contract or yeah. eight years left or whatever it is. So that's definitely – that is a, kind of an enticing option in that regard because you would have him forever. Yeah. Um, I do want to throw out one thing. I made a video talking about this guy, and someone did mention that he had like some sort of – thing that sport rack isn't showing here okay like it was like a potential like after two years he can like get out of it some yeah. kind of situation so someone let me know in the chat like what that situation is but if this is true then this is exciting up till 2030 Interesting. That's, that's really huge yeah i mean the control is definitely something that i like but yeah. it is going to be very interesting to see how they navigate this entire second base third base situation i mean i don't think this is necessarily the direction that we expected them to go and it's still possible that they go out and they re-sign Matt Chapman. You never know. It's still possible that they do that. And then all of this kind of just, you know, doesn't even mean anything right, anymore. Right. But for right now, I think that we can both at least be in agreement that something does need to happen. It does, man. Guys, you let us know in the comments down below. What do you think is going to happen? And what do you think should happen for the Toronto Blue Jays to get a shot at competing again in 2024? Please make sure to like, subscribe, comment your thoughts down below. Also, $3 a month, become a Patreon member. Shout out and thank you to all of our current Patreon members and our YouTube members, too. You guys are so appreciated. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And as always, Go Jays Go! Jays go!